it seems like yesterday. You look around and everything changes. Name is Reed Tillis, Jr. Class of 1953. The city of Jacksonville, along the east coast of Florida, only 25 miles from the Georgia border. Jacksonville is a city with a very rich history and thriving industry and its own unique personality. I've lived here all my life. I moved here when I was about five, five years old, and that was probably 19, mid 30s. During the early 20th century, Jacksonville became a banking and insurance center which created a booming business district. The U.S. Navy and the U.S. Marine Corps established a presence in Jacksonville during those early years. I thought when you grew up, you either went to work for Merrill Stevens or went in the Navy. That was just what people did. Jacksonville, Florida has become the nation's largest city due to its enormous geographic footprint. But it wasn't always that way. The milk was delivered by a horse in a carriage. That didn't last too long. Uh, Jacksonville is a wonderful city. Many families from all over America moved to Jacksonville after the Great Depression to find work at the shipyards. Well, both were a way of life because Jacksonville, one of the industries was the shipyard. I can remember taking my dad to the shipyard riding a bicycle. I'd be on the handlebars and he'd be pedaling. Until 1926, students in Jacksonville had attended Duval High School, but the increase in population created the need for more space and more classrooms. Duval High was replaced by three new schools, Lee, Jackson, and Landon. One school was named after a former United States president and the namesake of our city. The second named after one of the most famous generals in the Civil War. The third and smallest of the three schools was named after a lifelong school teacher and female pioneer in Jacksonville education, Julia B. Landon. There's very little known about Julia Landon, but her commitment and legacy for education live on today with the historical landmark. When I graduated, everybody knew everybody. Everybody went to the same church, and everybody went to the same drive-ins and the same malt shops. The nearby San Marco area grew rapidly, as did Landon High School along with it. The San Marco district, its movie theater, shops, and opportunities helped Landon truly become this community's high school. You would spend the day Saturday at San Marco Theater because there were two movies and newsreels and you spent the whole day for nine cents. World War II was immediately felt by Jacksonville given its shipyards and Navy bases. The city continued doing its business to support the war effort. Well, there was a war going on. It was a way of life. We were used to blackouts and I remember my brothers being on the watchtower and they would watch for airplanes. And I remember the rationing. I didn't realize we were poor. <laughs> it seemed like uh, the war years lasted a long time, and actually they didn't. After World War II, the city grew rapidly, and with this peacetime came a vibrance not only for Jacksonville, but for the entire United States. Music, dancing, cars, and freedom. It was, it was just a, an exciting time to be in Jacksonville, there were only three high schools. People are still remembering how we were, Landon, Jackson, and Lee. Landon High School opened its doors to its first class in the fall of 1927. Landon was just a, a, a way of life. It was a top-notch school. My dad went to Landon, and I didn't know it. But it was, it was fun going to Landon. I went through the Landon all the way from the seventh through the 12th grade. And I walked to Landon every day too during that time. While I was at Landon, we did not have electricity. I made good grades, so it must not have impeded me too much. 
Sports were an integral part of Landon High in the 1940s and 50s. Memorable football games in the Gator Bowl and the legendary Lioness dance team are still fresh in graduates' minds. I think my fondest memories were of participating in the Lionettes and also being a cheerleader. That was a lot of fun. I was a Lionette for three years. That was a drill team. You couldn't be a Lionette until you were in the 10th grade. Kathleen Turner was the physical director for the gymnastics. You either loved her or hated her. She was just a real down-to-earth person, but she, she was strict. All my friends from the Lionettes, there was over 160 girls. We were known all over the state, which we performed at all the Lannan games in the Gator Bowl. Oh, that was fun. Epic games between city rivals are still on the minds of alumni nearly 70 years later. Well, I think the most memorable was probably in my senior year when we won the Cove State Championships with Lee. Nothing, nothing tie. That was a lot of fun, and then that year when Landon and Lee played in the Gator Bowl, we had over 32,000 fans. It gave us a sense of unity. And these football stars were like astronauts, and they knew it, and they loved it. These memories are etched in people's minds like it was yesterday. I remember our uh, guard had a tooth knocked out, and he had a perfect set of teeth. And after the game, he went back out on the field and was crawling around on the field trying to find that tooth. <laughs> Everything was a first, like it is with everybody in high school. Everything you're doing, nobody else has ever done. Most all of my memories of Jacksonville are just, and Landon in particular, just, just real good memories. <laughs> yeah, we, we had crushes on everybody and uh, they had crushes on us. We didn't have much to do with the other high schools. Jackson had a bad reputation, but those boys could dance. And so that was, that was okay to go to a dance and dance with a guy from Jackson. Uh, the Lee boys, they couldn't dance. They, 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 they couldn't do much, but they all had money. And so they usually had a car or the family had a car. So they, they were okay. My wife went to land and she graduated in 1955. I married my childhood sweetheart, Maxwell Higgs, and he's passed away and I married again. And I'm 91, going on 92, and if I could find me a nice fella, I might just do that again. Landon High closed its doors as a high school in 1965 and reopened as a middle school. My name is Gil Whitaker. I attended Landon Junior High School from 1965 to 1967. This was after Landon had changed over from a full-time high school, uh, which was 7th through 12th grade, I believe. They changed it strictly to a junior high school. San Marco was, was aging. We had two new high schools opening up. Out of necessity, they, they moved it to a junior high school. As I was at Landon, when I was there, I had a lot of the same teachers my parents had. Uh, Ed and Joyce Whitaker are my parents. Graduates from Landon in, in 47 and 48, I believe. I've heard stories since I was a little kid about Landon High School, and I've had their friends and, and their friends' families all around me uh, all my life. Uh, Dad. I uh, played sports, he was, a, he, he was a three sport athlete. Mom was a cheerleader and a lionette. So they were, I think dad was class president in his senior year. They were all uh, inter, both integrally involved in, in Landon at the time. The history of Landon High was not forgotten. If Churchill was correct about history, a small group of victors are doing their part to preserve their own. Hidden away in a strip mall inside a small office, the largest collection of Landon High history and memorabilia is being preserved by a handful of alumni. Founded in 1988 by Mark Blankfield, it serves as the glue that holds this small community together. Got roped in on this deal. They couldn't find anybody that wanted it. And Carolyn Graham, who has been here since the beginning, whatever she wants, I'm gonna do. These proud graduates meet once a month to assemble and mail newsletters to the approximately 500 living alumni from Landon High. 
because it's their newsletter. Uh, we just put it together and send it out. It's been a wonderful thing for me to be involved in this. I feel like it keeps me uh, up to date with a lot of the graduates. It's a fun thing to have. The alumni room has served as the sole guardian and keeper of this school's history. It's literally a walk down memory lane for them every time they come into this room. It's filled with yearbooks, photos, game balls, and Lionette memorabilia. When you think about it, you can c come into this room and see all this stuff, it brings back a lot of memories. It is special to continue and perpetuate this because it is part of Jacksonville's history. It's an important part. The Alumni Association hosts annual all-class reunions to gather and reminisce all of their fond memories. The reunions have become lifelong gatherings of generations of Alandon alumni. The community that these people built in their youth still lives on today, 53 years after the high school closed its doors. I don't think I've missed one. We thoroughly enjoy it. That was the spirit that we knew from high school. We love all these people. Next year I'll be 90 years old and good Lord willing, I'm, I'm going to be right here. Many bring their children and grandchildren so they can pass along these great memories they all experience together. They know about Landon. My daughter attends every function. It's part of her. So it's just like all a big family that connects. Our numbers are get, getting smaller, but we still have fun. I'll, I'll stay with it as long as I, as I can, because it's that important to me. When asked about the legacy they'd like to leave, these guardians simply hope that the future generation of Landon Lions will experience the same joy and create the same lifelong memories and friendships that they did years ago. Well, I would like for them, if their parents was lucky enough to go, to live the kind of life that they live. I just can't describe it. It's just a feeling of a family, like a family. I would like for people to know that uh, it's a, it was a very rich heritage. And I particularly like the idea that the lions there in San Marco remind me of the land of lions. I, I just think that it may be, be a coincidence, I don't know. But every time I see them, I feel a surge of pride.